the long-awaited moment has finally arrived and we get the chance to tame the Austrian beast that is the Super Duke. We've heard plenty about its mega powerful engine and super chassis, but now we've finally had the chance to take it by the horns and see what it's made of. No doubt that the Super Duke has style. Its sharp lines and compact form add to a feeling of performance and brutality, which is reinforced by this magnificent black livery. There's a new look at the front with a small tinted wind deflector that's more for looks than for any real practical benefit. The grills have also been changed, as has the mudguard. As for the bike itself, there are Brembo brakes, which quite honestly could stop a plane, Radial calipers with 320mm floating discs, enough said there. The styling of the back is equally distinctive. The twin exhaust under the seat are magnificent, with the rear light looking at something like it's from another planet. The fork and shock absorber come courtesy of wide power, and everything is fully adjustable, which says a lot about sporting intentions of this machine. The dash is like on KTM's larger bikes, fully featured and readable, but there is no control on the handlebar and no fuel gauge. Once on board the Super Duke, you realize what makes this bike different. Chest towards the front, feet slightly to the rear, the riding position is sporty but still comfortable over longer distances. A note of caution though, this bike is intended for experienced riders. The bi-cylinder engine is extremely powerful between 3000 and 8000 RPM. The 2007 version may be more controlled than its predecessor, but it is still brutal at low speeds and can easily catch you out. The chassis is clean and simple. The Super Duke is rigid and agile, but can handle small bumpy roads like our test route. Its range is also increased to over 200 kilometers, thanks to a fuel tank that is four liters larger. The brakes are powerful, but remain fairly progressive, so as not to catch you out too much there. On the 2006 version, the front end was too lively. This year, the angles have been changed to make it more stable. The KTM is easier to control, but don't expect it to be like a nice, tranquil roadster. It's still a monster, much more brutal than its cousins like the FZ1 or the Z1000. We headed into Lyon on evening to test out the Super Duke's performance around town, as well as check out its sex appeal. And it's getting a few looks, no doubt about that. It produces some fantastic sound. The KTM is capable in town, but it's not where it's most at home, except maybe pulling away from lights. With its savage looks, powerful engine and flawless chassis, the latest version of the Super Duke is certainly a step forward. However, it remains a bike that will be favoured exclusively by the most passionate of riders. Those that are ready to sacrifice a bit of rideability for the sensations it generates instead. At 12,600 euros, there is a price to pay for this kind of exclusivity.